Hello there. In this video, we're going to show you the various different ways in which you can record an invoice within Xero. There's several different options for this. We're going to take the easiest ones first and then we'll work through from there. First of all, there's a very simple option at the blue bar at the top. We can click on the plus symbol for the quick launch option and we can click on invoice. Within there, that's then going to open up the invoice window. We can fill in who the invoice is for. So here I'm going to type in and it will type ahead and find who I'm looking for. I'm going to add this for Bayside Club. It will give us today's date by way of default. I can click on the drop down and select a different day. That's absolutely fine. And I can also then tab through. And if I tab past the due date, it will also include today's date. I once again can then select a date from here or I can do something a little more clever by simply saying something like plus seven, at which point it will add seven days to the date of my invoice. The invoice number is counting up sequentially based on a numbering sequence within zero itself. I can modify that number if I want to. So I can make this something else. As long as it's unique, it's absolutely fine. Next time, it will just revert to the ordinary next invoice number that it has in the system. I can add an invoice reference. So this could be anything that my client might recognize. I can choose my individual branding theme. So depending upon what I wish to use, I can have my own different styles of invoice. I can attach files to my invoice as well. So I can choose those either from the files library within Xero or I can upload new files into the system here. I can then choose if I am VAT registered, whether my invoice should be tax exclusive, tax inclusive, or include no tax at all. I'm gonna keep it tax exclusive for the moment and you'll see what that will do. Within the invoice itself, the main body here, I can then choose items from a pre-prepared list of um, things that I sell and things that I uh, want to immediately use to populate a line of information within the invoice. If I select an item here, you can see that this then populates the various fields and gives me something that I don't have to fill in myself. Alternatively, I can delete that line and I can simply add something of my own choosing. So in this occasion, as I do a lot of the time, we're selling a lot of stuff. Here I can give it a quantity, I can give it a unit price. I can give it a discount if I want, but all that that is doing is reducing the total of the line and nothing else. So in the most part, we tend to not include discounts and that's just gonna keep the value the same as my unit price in this case. It then will suggest to me a sales account, uh, a revenue account. I might have more than one revenue account to choose from. I'm gonna leave it at sales for the moment. And based on that particular account, it's then giving me a, a tax rate. So here, because this example is VAT registered, it's suggesting that this sale should be 20% VAT on income. You can see, therefore, it's working out what the tax should be. If we are using tracking categories, then we can include any items for those. That's absolutely fine. But you'll see that because my invoice is tax exclusive, it's then adding the VAT on top of my net value. If I turned this round, then it would simply break the VAT out from the total that I have stated. I'm going to leave it as tax exclusive for now. though. If I wanted to, I can add message lines to my invoice. They are just simply in the description field. You would pop your message in. We can use this option on the left to move lines up and down so that we've got the content of the invoice in the order that we want to see it. And if need be, I can either remove any excess lines or add new lines, either one at a time or adding several in one go. You'll see there's an option here to assign items to a project. If you do have zero projects, then this can be included as part of the information within that project record. If I'm not quite finished with the invoice, I can save this as a draft. And this will then pop itself into the draft invoices section of my dashboard and also within my sales overview. Alternatively, if I'm happy that I have completed everything that I need to in here, I can approve this invoice. The drop down option to the right just gives me options to either approve and add another or approve and print, but I'm just gonna choose approve here. If on the other hand, there was, uh, didn't want this invoice, I could simply cancel it at this stage. So I'm gonna then approve that. And you'll see from the information that appears, there is the content of my invoice, and at the bottom, 
I can see that I then have a history section. So when I click onto this, it's now showing me that I have both an, uh, created the invoice today and who it was, and that I approved that invoice today as well. If I go on to send the invoice, that will also be recorded here. And depending upon how people access it, we might also get information that they've accessed the invoice online as well. We have a couple of in options in terms of sending an invoice. One, we can simply print the PDF. When we do so, we can mark it as sent and that's absolutely fine. And when that then appears, we'll see that this is giving us a fairly standard sort of invoice template. We can create custom templates in the background. So these can be based on your own branding themes, etc. But it gives us everything that we would need to physically print and give to our client. Alternatively, we can email this. So as long as we've got an email address for the recipient, we can then have our message displayed. I'm not gonna necessarily send it to Bayside Club. Hi, Bayside Club is fairly impersonal. So I'm just gonna change that to say, hi, Bob. And I'm also gonna say, thanks, David. So once we've then got that in place, I can also choose to include any attached files as well as the attachment of the invoice itself. You can see here, I'm including an attachment of the invoice as a PDF. And I can also send myself a copy of the invoice as well. The only reason that I would say think about sending this PDF attachment is that if they only open a PDF attachment, then we get no notification of this. If, on the other hand, we force them by not including the PDF attachment, if we force them to click on this link to view the invoice online, that generates an item of history for us and we can actually see that it was viewed online. So it's up to you whether you include the PDF of the invoice, but that's the reasons that we can see there. I'm not going to send this right now because Bob doesn't exist, but that in essence is how we would then send that invoice across. If I needed to edit the content of the invoice, then within the invoice itself, all I have to do is click onto invoice options and I can choose to edit it here. Now, if I do so, this will open up all of the fields within the invoice again. I can access any one of these. I can change any element of this that I need to. So I could change the branding, the reference, even who it's to. Ultimately, as long as I then go ahead and update my invoice, it will save those changes for me. If at any point there is a payment attached to this invoice, again, if we've reconciled part of the balance as part of the bank reconciliation or marked it off as paid in any other way, then what it will do is lock the vast majority of those fields and we will only be able to change certain items, primarily items like the reference, the branding, etc. But again, just be aware of that restriction. So how else could we raise an invoice? Well, from the dashboard itself, we would also be able to look at the section based on invoices owed to you. And within there, we would also be able to click on the new sales invoice. So the difference here is that this is only visible from the dashboard, whereas the plus option is available in any screen that you're in within Zero. Beyond that, there is also the ability to add this via an app. So I'm gonna quickly change over my screen share. We're going to be able to see very shortly my iPhone. So within my mobile device, you can see here that rather like the desktop variety, I have a plus symbol at the top right. So I can click onto that plus, I can choose to create a new invoice. And from there, I can say who we are invoicing. I can start to type the name in just as I did before. I can select the recipient. I can choose the date of the invoice. I can choose when the invoice is due. And if I need to, I can amend the invoice number just as I could in the desktop variety. I could state whether the invoice is exclusive or inclusive of tax, and I can add my items to this. I can either select a, an existing product or service, or I can enter a new description. So just as before, we can enter stuff, thank you very much. I can then add my quantity, so it's a quantity of one, unit price, and once I've done that, if I'm happy with the details there, I can simply go ahead and either save that invoice, add any attachments, approve it, send it, do whatever I need to do. Um, if I do approve it there, I can always come back and look at my invoice so I can click through into my unpaid invoices and there are my invoices to Bayside Club. 
I can quite easily click into that one. And from there, under my options, I can send that straight out to my client. So very, very easy through the desktop uh, application or through the mobile application. Meanwhile, back in the desktop application, the third way of adding an item would be if we are actually within our contact record. So if I move through into my customers, we can see that within my customer records, I'm going to look for Bayside Club. So again, if I start to type in the name, it will appear. When I click through into Bayside Club itself, we will see that at the top left, I have an option to add a new item. I can click on this drop down and select a new sales invoice. Again, we're back to the same form, so we can simply fill in the details as we would before. That's adding an invoice. We've looked then briefly also at editing the invoice. The only other options that I would say is if you wanted to simply review the invoices, you can either click into those that are awaiting patent, and this will bring you through into that section of your sales overview. Or alternatively, from the dashboard itself, you can click onto the header of invoices owed to you, and this will take you straight through to the invoices or sales overview. So within there, you can see there are our awaiting payment items. And if I click back through into there, you'll see that in usually chronological order, these will appear. Currently, I've got them listed alphabetically. So looking down my list, we can see there are the invoices for Bayside Club. If I did want to record the fact that this had been paid, then usually I would do so through um, the bank reconciliation. However, I can add payment details directly within an invoice itself. So if I click through and add my date, I might say that it's been paid tomorrow because that's when it's been promised. I can add where it's been paid to. I'm going to say my current account. I could add a reference if I want. I can change the amount that's being paid as well if I wish. And then I can simply click on to add the payment. This will mark the invoice as paid. So if I then move across into my paid section within my invoices, there is the list of paid invoices. If I look at these in terms of date order, we will see that if we bring those back into the right order, we're going to get the items most recent first, and there is Bayside Club. Invoices themselves, we can add notes to. So just like any or many parts within Zero, we've got all sorts of abilities to add our notes in to the system just so that we can keep things up to date. If we had not applied the payment against this invoice, then we would also be able to add um, a suggested payment day. So within here, if I pick up any invoice that I've got, I can simply say, well, these invoices are my paid ones. Let's me find an unpaid invoice. If I come back to invoices, we'll go back to awaiting payment. And looking at the first item there, I'll just go straight into this invoice here. You can actually see that from my notes, I also have that option suggested there of an expected payment date. I can select my date and add that and save it. And also from that invoices section as well, still within awaiting payment, I could also add those dates simply from this list. So I can click onto the plus symbol, put my date in, you'll see that it gives me the ability to add my notes as well. And I can simply save them without having to go into each individual invoice at that rate. So lots of flexibility in terms of creating and keeping up to date the invoices that we send to our clients. Thank you very much for your time today. I hope that was helpful, but we'll see you again soon. Thanks for now. The one thing I didn't say was that it was David from Valued. Never mind. <laughs>